Hi guys, it's Dr. John back with a dose of the early Bob Dylans. So this is an interview in a conference hall he did in 1965 in San Francisco. Um, it's quite long, about 50 minutes. If we listen carefully, we can get a good idea of how Bob thought about his art at this time, and also the kind of disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation at this time. Of course, Bob was a representation of, 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 of the young people and had already sold millions of albums. Lots of people were hanging on his every word. These older, cynical journalists really wanted to know what was going on and they're pumping Bob and uh, Bob isn't necessarily making it easy for him for them let's uh, let's take a look at this video I'll probably break it up into two or three parts and give my comments uh, after each part so let's bring up this first part questions about everything from atomic science to uh, uh, riddles and rhymes. Go. <laughs> oh my Who's God. first? Come on. I'd like to know about the cover of your of your forthcoming your, your uh, uh, album. <laughs> the, uh, the one with the subterranean. Delicate, refreshing bubbles with a touch of natural flavors. Ooh, lime, mmm, raspberry, and mango. Hello. Mount Franklin Lightly Sparkling, the nation's hydration with invigoration. Our planet never ceases to amaze us. The best is always waiting to be discovered. Every corner hides unseen treasures that leave you spellbound. Be the f so many of these apples right now. Journeys. I'm really sorry, but there's not much Where I can do. Can I only started this video three times. So Welcome exactly to Arabia. Really happened, so Get your visa you now. For a quieter period of the day, but otherwise, not, there's nothing I can do. So I'd like to know about the, the meaning of the photograph with you in the Wearing a Triumph t-shirt. What did you want to know about it? Well, I'd like to know that that's an equivalent photograph. It means something. It's got a philosophy in it. And I'd like to know, <laughs> well, I'd like to know visually what it represents to you, because you're a part of that. Um, I haven't really looked at it that much. I don't really I've know. thought about it a great deal. I, it was just taken one day when I was sitting on the steps, you know. I, I don't... Uh, I don't really remember any very too much about it. Well, what about the motorcycle as an image in your in your songwriting? You seem to like that. Oh, we all like motorcycles to some degree. I do. Do you think of yourself primarily as a singer or as a poet? Well, I think of myself more as a song and dance man, you know. What? <laughs> <laughs> song and dance man. Oh. 
I don't think we have enough time to really go into that. You're quoted in the Chicago Daily News as saying that uh, when you're really wasted, you may enter into another field. How wasted is really wasted, and do you foresee it? No, I don't foresee it, but it's more or less like a ruthless type of feeling. Boom. Very ruthless and uh, intoxicated to some degree. Uh, the criticism that you've received for more or less leaving folk music for folk rock uh, hasn't seemed to bother you very much. Do you think you'll stick with folk rock, or are you going it's, on into more writing? Uh, I don't play folk rock. What I would you call play. your music? I would call it uh, um, I like to think of it more in terms of vision music. It's uh, mathematical music. <coughs> would you say that the words were more important than the music? Uh, the words are just as important as the music. There would be no music without the words. Which do you do first ordinarily? Uh, the words. Do you think there will ever be a time when you will paint or sculpt? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. said when you, you always do your words first and you think of it as music. When you do the words, can you hear it? Can I hear I mean, the Can you sort of hear yes. what music you want with yes. when you do your words? Oh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> do you hear any music before you have words? Do you have any songs that you don't have words to yet? Um, sometimes on uh, very gentle instruments, not on the guitar, though. Maybe something like the harpsichord or the harmonica or auto harp I might uh, hear some kind of melody or tune which I would I would know the words to, to put to. You say that? Yes, n not, not with the guitar though. The guitar is too hard an instrument. I don't really hear many melodies based on the guitar. Do you sit down just to write a song or do you um, just write it on inspiration? I'm more or less right it on, uh, on a lot of things. <laughs> what poets do you dig? Oh, um, Rambo, I guess, W.C. Fields. Uh, <laughs> The, the family, uh, you know, the, the trapeze family in the circus? Uh, Smokey Robinson. Allen Ginsberg. Charlie uh, Rich. He's a good poet. In a lot of your songs, you're hard on a lot of people. Like uh, in Like a Rolling Stone, you're pretty hard on the girl. And in Positively Forced, you're pretty hard on the supposed friend. Are you hard on them because you want to torment them or because you want to change their lives and make them know themselves? I want to needle them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still sing your older songs? No. No. I just saw a songbook last night. I don't really see too many of those things, but there's a lot of songs in those books I haven't even recorded, you know. I've just written down, you know, and uh, put little tunes to it, and they've published them. I haven't sung them, though. I, I, a lot of the songs I just don't even know anymore, even the ones I did sing. There doesn't seem to be enough time, you know. 
Did you change your program when you went to England? No, no. I finished it there. That was the end of my my uh, uh, my older program. I didn't change it. It was developed, and by the time <laughs> we got there, it was all, it was more or less. I knew what was going to happen all the time, you know. I knew how many encores there was, you know, how, which songs they were going to clap on the loudest, and all those kind of things. On a concert tour like this, do you do the same program night after night? Well, sometimes it's different. I think we'll do the same one here in this area, though. Did you in England do any of the songs like Subterranean? No, I didn't work with the band there. Will you be working with the band here? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. In a uh, recent broadside interview, uh, Phil Oakes said uh, you should do films. Do you have any plans to do this? No, I don't. Uh, I do have plans to make a film, but not because anybody said I should do them. Yeah. How soon will this be? Next year, probably. Can you tell us what it'll be about? It'll be just another song. You dig Flex, who is your who is who are the people making films that you dig particularly? Uh, Tufo. Uh, I really can't think of any more people. But Italian movie directors, you know. But not not too many people in England or in the United States, which I can, can really think that I would dig. You did El Chaplin bit as an exit line on your concerts once. I did? <laughs> that's, that must have been an accident. <laughs> I have to stay away from that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Well, thank you very much. Was that taken right here with the Polaroid? Right. Hmm. <laughs> Good God, I must leave right away. <laughs> <laughs> Do they usually end up with the same oh, meaning I, that you I, wrote? Or? I welcome them <laughs> <laughs> with open arms. The University of California mimeographed the lyrics to all the, all the songs in the, la in the last album and had a symposium discussing them. Do you welcome that? Oh, sure. I'm just kind of sad I'm not around to be a part of it. But it would have been nice. pretty wild if you had been. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Duff Dunson in his uh, new book, Freedom in the Air, implies that you have sold out to commercial interests and the uh, topical song movement. Do you have any comments here? Well, I've, no comments, no arguments. No, uh, I certainly don't feel guilty. If you were going to sell out to a commercial interest, which one would you choose? <laughs> Bob? Had, um, ladies' garments. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, have you worked with any rock and roll groups? Uh, professionally? Or just sitting in or on concert tours with them or sitting no. in with their sessions? No, I don't usually play too much. Do you listen to other people's recordings of your songs? <laughs> Sometimes. A few of them have heard. I don't really make it a, I don't really come across it that much, though. Is it a strange experience? No. It's like, more or less like a heavenly kind of thing. <laughs> what do you think of uh, Joan Baez's interpretations of your earlier songs? Uh, you mean the one she, I haven't heard her latest album, or the one before that. I heard one, uh, she does them all right, I, I think. Colors? What do I think of Donovan Colors? Yeah. Do you think he's a, a, a good poet of love ballads? No. He's a nice guy, though. <laughs> I'm shattered. Huh? I'm shattered. 
<laughs> well, you needn't be. <laughs> Are there any young folk singers or rock groups that you would recommend for us to hear? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's uh, the Sir Douglas Quintet. I think are probably the best that, in, uh, that are going to have a chance of reaching commercial airwaves. They already have with a couple songs. Uh, what about Paul Butterfield? They're, they're good. Mr. Dillon, you call yourself a completely disconnected person. Uh, would you like to No, I, I didn't call myself that. It's, it's, uh, it just drove those words in my mouth. I saw that in the paper. Uh -huh. <coughs> How would you describe yourself? What is it that you, you uh, have you analyzed this? Why you appeal to people? I certainly haven't, no. Mr. Dillon, I know you uh, dislike labels, and probably rightly so, but uh, for those, those of us who are well over 30, could you uh, label yourself and perhaps uh, tell us what your role is? Well, I sort of label myself as well under 30. <laughs> uh, and my role is to, uh, you know, to just uh, stay here as long as I can. <laughs> in recent broadside having to do with the fact that it, well he feels that it becomes increasingly dangerous for you to you can't hear no phil oaks wrote something in a recent broadside magazine to the effect that you have that you have twisted so many people's wigs that he feels that it becomes increasingly dangerous for you to perform in public before an audience well that's the way it goes you know <laughs> I don't, uh, can't apologize, certainly. Did you envision a time when you would give five concerts in one area like this within ten days? No. No, this is all very new to me. If, uh, if you were draftable at present, uh, do you have any feelings of what your actions might be? No. I probably, uh, probably just do what had to be done. Well, I don't know. I never really speak in terms of what if, you know, so I don't really know. You're considered by many people to be symbolic of the protest movement in the country for the young people. Um, are you going to participate in the Vietnam Day Committee demonstration in front of the Fairmont Hotel tonight? I'll be busy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You planning any demonstrations? Well, we thought of one. <laughs> we thought of one. I don't know if it could be organized in time. Uh, well, it was a demonstration where I'd make up the cards. You know, they have uh, have a group of protesters here, uh, perhaps carrying cards with. Pictures of Jack of Diamonds is on them, and Ace of Spades on them. <laughs> Pictures of uh, mules, maybe words, and uh, oh, maybe about uh, 25, 30,000 of these things printed up, and just pick it. Here are the signs, and pick it. What words? In front of the post office. What? <laughs> Oh, words, uh, camera, <laughs> microphone, <laughs> loose, <laughs> just, just words. Names of some famous people, huh? I'm sorry. Oh, do you consider yourself a politician? Do I consider myself a politician? Well, I guess so. I have my own party, though. <laughs> have a name? No, there's no presidents in the party. There's no presidents or vice presidents or secretaries or anything like that, so it makes it kind of hard to get in. Is there any right wing or left wing of that party? <laughs> no, it's more or less in the center. 
kind of on the upper scale. <laughs> you think your party's going to end the war with China? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they have any people over there that it would be in the same kind of party. You know? So it might be kind of hard to infiltrate. I don't think my party... Okay, I'm going to stop it there and uh, I'll do a consideration of the second part of this interview later on. just have a few things to say now. One of the things, uh, well, first of all, this seems to work on many different levels. It's uh, a young guy talking to older guys on, on one level and you have that disconnect between one generation and another. On another level, there is a kind of superiority from Bob because he's a, already considered to be a great artist and sold millions of albums, lots of people hanging on every word. He's, he seems, uh, on another level, he seems very shy, perhaps, in some ways. Is it shyness or is it... Uh, is it uh, taciturn, well I'm sure it is a taciturn approach, but probably there is an element of shyness uh, there as well, he certainly doesn't want to talk about about, about certain things um, so on the one level he's at the front there he's vulnerable, he's a young person talking to people who are older and probably more experienced in some ways but on the other hand he's an incredibly successful artist who Lots of people <coughs> think he's better than <coughs> maybe better than the Beatles, and uh, the leader of a, a new generational movement of protest against the government, against things like the Vietnam War. So he's inevitably involved in some kind of political. Uh, cultural context too so uh, <coughs> there are all these levels going on and uh, what's clear is that Bob doesn't really want to talk about anything outside his music and uh, some things about his music and his art he doesn't want to talk about either like uh, questions about what does it mean now this is pretty typical I think that any poet or novelist or writer or painter or musician they're happy to talk about the, the, the nuts and bolts of what they do the uh, do the words come first or do the, does the music come first was one question Bob was quite uh, articulate about that and uh, happy to say that usually the words come first and he can hear the melody as he's, as he's writing the words but he doesn't respond very well to the question about uh, about uh, the, the picture on the cover of his album. What does it represent? The question is is, is too general, and uh, about people analysing his 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 lyrics, he says he in a sarcastic way that he welcomes it, but it's clear that it's clear that he doesn't. And not only from saying that, but also from his. Uh, tendency to say as little as possible whenever anyone brings up a general question about uh, what does it mean, who is Mr. Jones, what is what is this, he's happy to talk about the, uh, and I think most artists would feel the same, there's nothing unusual about that, if you're a poet then you don't want to explain what your poet means, or people who ask you questions like uh, what did you so it's, 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 what did you mean by this? It's like asking Shakespeare, well, who was the dark lady in your poems, in your sonnets? Well, if he tells them that, there's no mystery anymore. The whole point about writing a poem is to, is to create something beautiful and artistic. If you just uh, summarize your life in a few lines, then uh, you might as well not, not write the poem. So you can see why he objects to questions of this kind, but when they, the questions are coming from a different angle, kind of about uh, maybe the mechanics of, of the writing and uh, um, 
does the music come first? Do, do, the, do the words come first? Uh, um, and the questions about his activity as a musician. He's quite happy, really, to 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 answer as as well as he's able as well as he's able to. What he doesn't want to do is is rise to the bait of being the representative figurehead for a generation. I think he's already had enough of that, and we could talk for a long time, really, about Bob from this point of view. He did come in undoubtedly on the protest movement and he was the most articulate of, the, of, of that group of young artists who were talking about, about how things had to change and we know for sure that he did kind of move away from it and was dissatisfied with just being a, a protest artist that he wanted to get into other things. He didn't think it defined him. It, the question as to whether he felt he was just doing something social and there was nothing political about it at the start, or he really did change and he did one thing and then did something else, uh, like a kind of chameleon, which many people say say, say he is, uh, is, a, is a, that's a moot point. Uh, and people argue about it a lot. Um, my own idea is that he was a young man, he came in with sincerity, what he wrote he meant, blowing in the wind, all those protest songs on times they were changing, but uh, maybe he was never essentially political, he was more uh, aesthetic and artistic, and it didn't take him long to want to express other sides of his personality in the protest movement, while it was life, it was life for people like Joan Byers and uh, and others, it was just one passing moment for Bob, and then he moved on to something else, and he didn't, although he'd been wildly successful, and was still incredibly young, he didn't want to be known as the voice of the protest generation. Um, there were plenty of people who would have been happy to live on that for the rest of their life, but Bob, no, he had other aspects of his personality that he wanted to express and uh, it's interesting how he uh, he is really batting away anything that's suggesting suggesting that he is representative of anything other than himself um lots of corny corny uh, vocabulary here like what you dig and who's that cat over there but anyway times change and uh, every every age seems corny to to later ages, but there is that element of uh, this emphasizing the generational divide between the state journalists asking their questions, which seem kind of loaded a lot of the time, like they're trying to trap Bob. There's an element of the the uh, Roman theater that, about this, like the Colosseum, the the, uh, the gladiator who comes to the front and uh, has to has to fight. In this case, Bob is really fighting the journalists. Is that element of conflict there? Defi definitely, there's there are so many things dividing them. The generational divide, maybe uh, the musical the taste divide, the, the the fact that Bob doesn't want to be uh, pigeonholed as leader of protest generation, which perhaps would make him easier to dismiss in a way. He's a marginal figure. He wants to tap into to different energies, and these people he feels maybe are trying to deny him the possibility of doing that. Um, so all these, all these things are going on. Bob often responds to questions he dislikes with humor or complete silence. And later here, one journalist... Uh, refers to this and says you don't seem very articulate most of the time you just you just uh, are silent and mumble and we don't know what you're saying and uh, Bob uh, he asks Bob to explain more about how he feels about his success and why he's successful and, uh, Bob doesn't get angry but he, he does say well what do you want me to do jump 
jump up and down and say say hooray that will be for another time that's in the second part of the video but uh, we can see here already that there is an element of conflict between Bob and the journalists he's more relaxed with people who are about his own age even if he doesn't like the questions like the the young lady who asks him about uh, the analysis of his of his lyrics uh, he responds well to serious questions about his work like the, the lady who asks him about what comes first the words or the music and uh, when he's asked about the covers of his songs which ones does he like he, he responds pretty normally says he likes Manfred Mann um, I think he particularly doesn't want to end up explaining his songs and you can understand that any artist doesn't really want to explain his art like saying to to Picasso explain Guernica <laughs> explain Guernica you, you know it, Guernica is there in the painting anyone can explain Guernica what do you want? Just a, a piece of history? Just just say what happened in Guernica? That's not about what Picasso does. It's about that particular painting. How does that connect to Guernica? How? Why does it inspire people? That's what the that's what the artist does, and that's what Bob is demanding from these people: respect as an artist, um, as an abstract artist who creates inspirational moments that other people might tap into he doesn't want to respond to those kind of, kinds of questions are asking him about what does this mean what's what's the meaning of that and as I say any artist would dislike with this any real artist would dislike that because it's asking the artist to explain his art like saying the Beethoven what did the, the fifth symphony mean well, if you listen to the Fifth Symphony, whatever you get from it, that's what that's what it meant. You can't explain the Fifth Symphony, and uh, no artist can explain his art. But anyone who asks him a reasonable question about his methods and how he how he works, he'll try his best to give them a reasonable answer. But you have all these different levels of conflict there, and uh, neither side really quite trusts the other side both are trying to come up with the, the perfect uh, question or the perfect answer in Bob's case it's usually some kind of some kind of put down like uh, how do you consider yourself most as a poet or as a singer it's a pretentious question really you have to it's putting you in the position him in the position of saying well yeah I consider myself as a poet so Bob takes steam out of his sails by famously saying I think myself more as a song and dance man it sounds uh, very sarcastic and he does come across as cynical here but we have to remember he was a lot younger than most of the journalists and this kind of cynicism was also a way of protecting himself so I think I've said enough about this right now and uh, I'll be continuing with the second part of this video and I'll have more to say then, so hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. See you next time. Thanks a lot.